Before I get on to uh, taking the door lock, door handles, the internal mechanisms and the window frame window and the electric motor for the windows off, I thought I'd show you uh, a little bit of progress on the wings. I was going to leave it till a little bit later but everything was going fine and I thought ah, areas without damage. But as you can see the wheel lip wheel arch lip there looks pretty good until we get to that point where we start to see a build up of filler and it's been profiled as on many other areas of the car uh, and it's obviously had a little bit of damage from there probably going backwards so I'm going to uncover that and see what it reveals uh, I know the bumper hanger points were changed uh, at some point, so whether it's had a little bit of a, a ding in the side or not, I don't know, only time will tell. So anyway, that's going to be the subject of another video, so right on to the doors. Right, today we're going to be removing the door lock the door handle, the door window and surround, uh, but first there's a few things we need to do. Before we can go ahead and remove the, uh, the bits I've just shown you, uh, first of all we need to remove the flush fitting remote release uh, and all its associated wires and uh, securing tabs, uh, which is an absolute pain to remove. We also need to remove the wiper motor uh, so we can get access to the cable and remove that. Um, then we need to remove four bolts which secure the uh, door window frame and its glass in place, which one at the bottom left there in that uh, recess, one there, uh, the left, sorry, the right bottom. And then there are two other bolts, one there, and one there and then it should just pull out that's the theory so let's have a look at doing that okay I've, I've actually refitted I've actually refitted uh, the flush door handle um, just to show how it's uh, removed uh, before we can take the, uh, the, do the door cover off um, so that's simply attached by those three screws that you can see in there and then you've got these cables which um, just clip out, clip out at the top there. And also at this end, there's one there and one there which are quite accessible. So just undo those and the whole lot will come out. There you can see one of the tabs that holds the uh, rods in place uh, with the orange uh, plastic centre there. Uh, that's a new one because I actually had to replace the door lock uh, at one point and obviously I've had all of this apart and it's an absolute pig to put back together. Uh, but um, I'll probably address that in another episode in the future when I come to reassemble all this lot. Uh, but anyway, just to release those tabs, uh, just use a flat blade screwdriver and a little bit of effort and they just pop out. Um, it's fairly complex in there and it's pretty much hard to see uh, but there are quite a few other tabs there you can see the uh, door lock uh, that where the key fits and that's attached to um, a little section of metal and that again is held on with a clip and that goes uh, to the door latch itself uh, you might just be able to make it out behind there and that's as well as that, the other end of that rod is located in there with another tab, I think. Uh, well, we'll have a look at that when I've got it all apart. Um, now, I will take all those apart in a second. Okay, I've removed the one tab off the, uh, the, the door key lock. Uh, and you can see it's retained by that uh, nut. There. And the easiest way to do that is just undo the nuts and it just comes over uh, that little bar there 
uh, and just pull it out through the hole. Um, I've left the, the other tab locating the little um, rod that goes from there to the door latch itself in place on the door latch uh, as that's retained by three bolts. Sorry, retained by four screws. So that uh, just uh, undoes and uh, it pulls out. So I was, of course, I was quite wrong. Uh, I did have to release the rods from their securing tabs before I could remove the uh, latch mechanism. Um, it's, it wasn't too fiddly, but putting them back together is very fiddly. So what I'll do is once everything's uh, removed from the car, I'll try and reassemble it uh, just to show how all the rods fit. Um, because uh, it's easy to get them the wrong way around, etc. So uh, it'll be a good guide and it'll help me remember once uh, I'll come back to uh, reassembling everything. Uh, and now we'll remove the door handle and uh, the door lock. Uh, that's re uh, removed by removing two bolts on the inside and uh, as I showed you uh, earlier uh, that securing nut. They're giving you a slight bit of misinformation there in that the door handle and the door lock don't actually need to be removed um, in order to remove the uh, uh, door window frame. Uh, the door lock was easy to remove and this particular bolt was okay but this one is an absolute pig uh, because you've got wires in the way and uh, you could do yourself a nasty injury. But anyway, I persevered and I did remove it, with, but it took me about uh, 10 minutes to do so. Um, so just for information, you do not need to remove these in order to re remove uh, the door window frame. Next job is to remove the uh, white window motor. It's one of the next things to do is to remove the uh, window motor and to do that there are two bolts which I'll show you in a minute uh, but first we have to release this uh, plastic cover oh, it's a bit dirty in there okay for some of you who remember I think I've got it wrong again in the words of Dick Emery anyway that is not the waterproof cover they were referring to in the manual um, I can only assume that it's a waterproof cover uh, over this aperture um, so I needn't have done that. Anyway, going back to the motor, uh, two securing bolts there and there, although there is a facility for a third one and there is actually a captive nut. One, two, three, as you can see. Um, now on the other side of the motor, there are two pegs which pull out of the mechanism for winding up and down the window. You can just about see there the cable uh, that raises and lowers the window just tied off there uh, and that's a, it seems it is plastic um, keyway that actually rotates uh, from the motor and raises and lowers the window. Now you're supposed to keep that in the position uh, of the window raised uh, but as you take the motor out it slightly drops so to try and get the motor in which I've tried for about five minutes uh, it's not easy. Anyway um, I can overcome that by uh, uh, fixing the window up into the frame when I need to. Okay so now to remove the uh, door window frame is to undo the four bolts on the inside of the door plus those uh, screws there to allow it to be pulled out. So three screws on here.
top one's actually uh, secured by a nut on the inside. Which is a little bit fiddly. Hooray! So we'll retrieve that nut um, after we've done the rest. Thank God for that. That was a pig. If I can make that nut captive in the... If I can make that nut captive before I uh, put it back together, all the better. Right, so the last four bolts to be removed and then we should be able to remove the uh, door window frame. So I believe the trick is to raise the rear of the door so it comes past the bobbins and then it'll all just pull out. With a bit of fiddling, there you go. And out we come. And there we have it. So here's the uh, door window frame removed from the door. And as you can see, it's in reasonable condition. Uh, at the bottom there, you can see a bit of surface rust and that'll be removed and uh, uh, some rust treatment applied and tidied up. Um, the cable that you can see there winding round is quite taut. Uh, but there is a method for removal, uh, renewing if you like, and lubricating. Uh, I may do that as an informative uh, video later on, but I'll have a think about that. Uh, I don't suppose it's particularly easy to do, but we'll have a look. Um, everything else is um, looks quite good, to be honest. The runners you can see here, uh, have inserted into them what's called a silent channel and that looks so it's uh, some sort of felt and that's uh, held in by adhesive. Um, at the top here is another piece of felt um, but it's only on the one side. Now I'm not sure whether it should be um, felt on both sides because if I lift it up you can see, I hope you can see this as you can see, there's quite a bit of movement there, and I would have thought there might be some uh, felt material that side as well. But um, uh, I can't find anything in the instruction manual to say that there should be. Um, but maybe I'll look into that, unless someone else can give me some advice. Also, at various points, there are felt anti-rattle pads uh, to stop the cables uh, from moving about and as the name suggests stop it rattling so those all look in pretty good condition but if I'm removing the rust uh, I'll have to replace a couple of them so that's all for this video. I will be removing the other uh, um, frame from the other door fairly soon, but I'm not gonna video that um, because I've covered it pretty much everything in this video. Uh, I will do an update on this particular subject um, once I get round to uh, refurbishing everything. And maybe I'll uh, remove those cables, as I say, as an informative video. So I hope you've liked this video, um, please like, subscribe and please comment if I've missed anything or you need some other advice or give me advice. Um, so again, thanks for watching, there'll be lots more to come soon, thank you.